Hello my friends and welcome, this is the latest update from Ukraine, let's start from the biggest news. Russia launched one more big aerial attack on Ukraine using many of the drones, missiles, but at the same time they also targeted their own territory inside the Russian Federation. Let's go for more details. Today the Ukrainian air defense eliminated 10 of the Kinjal hypersonic missiles that were launched from the MiG-31 supersonic aircraft, also 62 of the cruise missiles together with 35 of the drones. All of the drones were shut down but some of the cruise missiles unfortunately went to their targets. By the way, all of the Kinjals were shut down by the Patriot systems. Patriots are very capable. Here we even have the video of the Kinjal missile that was shut down in skies and fell down into the Dnipro river. It's in Kiev city, the capital city of Ukraine. Some say that it was just a part of the acceleration engine of the Patriot missile, but it's not like that. According to this debris form, it looks very similar to Kinjal. As for the attack itself, many of the residential buildings were damaged, unfortunately, plus some of the cars, saloons and shops, including the Tesla shop. I'm not going to show you everything on this video, because after all, it's YouTube with its own policies. Unfortunately, there are some of the civilian casualties today because of the massive Russian attack but you know three days before it was more massive but more casualties what happened during today's attack according to the Russian official information is the rocket or bomb separation from the airplane and those went into the local village of Voronezh Oblast totally demolishing several of the buildings so again friendly fire before there were many of those cases happening in Belgorod and now Voronezh. Right away Russian bots started to type in the comments that it's not the Russian village, it's a Ukrainian, but later on the Russian defense ministry officially confirmed that they have the system failure and some of the rockets just separated and went down to this village. I think they might have some of the casualties based on the destruction that was caused by those missiles and indeed it's severe. And just right now while I'm recording this video, Ukraine probably launched the drone attack on Belgorod city of the Belgorod People's Republic. You may see that Russia is using some of the air defense out there based on those traces. The aerial kabooms have been reported and filmed by the eyewitnesses. Based on the serial numbers of the Russian cruise missiles, we might say that they were freshly produced by the Russian factories. It means that they have the potential to produce those, unfortunately. But still they're in lack to produce many of them, that is why they're incapable to perform those kind of the attacks each day. Once in a week, yes, unfortunately they may do it. Now let's go to the front lines update to the northern part of those where Ukraine actually got the success in this village of Sinkivka. Russia tried to perform many of the attacks in this place, but all of them failed and Ukraine gathered some of the resources and started to push Russians away from Sinkivka to make sure that the village is protected and our guys have some sort of the buffer area between Russian positions and Sinkivka. We have the confirmation about it, so Ukraine used infantry forces and some of the artillery fire to get more ground under control. So definitely it is the successful Ukrainian counterattack in this place. For how long is it going to stay like that? I'm out of clue. The front lines are very active nowadays sometimes. Russia takes some sort of the ground, sometimes Ukraine. I still predict the Russian advancement towards Sinkivka because their main goal is to take Kupensk city back under control and Sinkivka is located just on the way. But it doesn't mean that all of their attacks will be successful, no. Most of them will just fail, but some of them might be successful. It means that Russia has the potential to take this village under control, unfortunately. When and whether it really happens in the future, it's hard to say. The thing is, for today we have quite optimistic news about Ukrainian advancement. It's good. Alright, we have more awesome news. Russia today, for the first time, deployed Yastrib AB counter artillery raider it is damn expensive quarter a billion dollars yes 250 million it's very sophisticated very new equipment as for russia and for the first day then this thing was deployed it was targeted by what i think by harmers so you may see how raider works out there 
it was spotted by a drone somehow it didn't see the drone and here is the Heimer shell exploding midair causing shrapnel to penetrate everything underneath after a while there was the second strike and obviously this system was completely destroyed it doesn't have some of the rocket fuel or some of the shells to explode but believe me this thing is just a scrap metal now so completely destroyed and this is what russians say on their military channels uh, dated from today units of the russian armed forces in the northern military district zone received the yastrip ab artillery reconnaissance complex well basically used to detect the enemy artillery fire or even mortar fire this was reported by the press service of the ministry of defense of the russian federation so the same day those were supplied those were also kaboomed and again this is one of the most expensive russian military tools they are in lack of the counter artillery raiders that is what we have in ukrainian army yes still ukrainian army needs more of those tools However, what our army has right now is better compared to the Russian Federation, if we speak about the counter-artillery tools. And this is the original article, untranslated, published on the Russian media sources. This time not a good news about the Ukrainian Leopard 2 tanks. Two of them were targeted by the Russian Lancet drones. So here you can see the Lancet drone and the Ukrainian Leopard 2 tank. The hatches are open, it means that crew has already evacuated, probably it's not the first strike of the Lancet drone on this particular unit. It is bad, it looks severe, but after all it just caused some of the damages to the tank construction, it didn't destroy it. But as usual Russians reported that they've eliminated the tank regiment of Ukraine. Well unfortunately it happens, Russia has the long range drones like Lancet drones and we don't have the proper resistance against those. Russians say that it was not really far from Avdi okay again while i'm recording this video the kaboom the huge one was reported in sebastopol if we zoom into this picture it's not a good quality but still we may see couple of the smoke sources on the ground so those are not the aerial explosions that happened on the ground probably ukraine tries to target something the last year ukraine behaved differently here after the russian attack immediately they have the response on their military infrastructure i believe that those were the cruise missiles probably some of the ships that were left in sebastopol were targeted because Russia still continued to use them to launch the cruise missiles attacking Ukrainian territory. The Russian Navy has at least three of the ships which are able to launch the cruise missiles attacking Ukraine. Those are caliber missiles. Well, hopefully those ships were targeted in particular. For this minute, it's hard to say because I have just obtained this information. And the local chats confirmed the information about those kabooms in Sevastopol, in Balaklava, that's the main base for the Russian submarines. At least it was before. Not sure if Russia is using it right now. Now, Streletska Bay, it is in Sevastopol itself, so couple of the kabooms at least, they say two kabooms, two zriva, two kabooms. Turkey is not letting the Ukrainian military ships to enter the Black Sea through the Bosphorus Channel. Ukraine got those ships from the United Kingdom. They might help Ukraine to demine the area because they are used for that particular job. But for now at least, Turkey doesn't want to give those ships permission to enter the Black Sea. Well, at the very beginning of the war, Russia wanted to send more ships to the Black Sea and Turkey also didn't give the permission for them. So they had to make a U-turn that helped Ukraine a lot. So probably it's the Turkish policy not to give the permission for the military ships to enter the Black Sea. But definitely those particular ships are not able to cause any sort of the damage to the Russian Navy because they are not capable. What they are capable to do is to demine some of the territory or area of the Black Sea. Strange why Turkey didn't give them permission. All right, and here we have the video from Belgorod. Uh, this part of the missile just hit the ceiling and went to the room. 
As you can see, it's the kids' room, so you may blame Ukraine for hitting civilians or not. Well, actually not, because it's the part of the Russian air defense missile. To be more particular, this aft part, the acceleration engine. After getting enough altitude and speed, this part just disassembles and flies towards the ground, in this case, towards the residential building. Luckily, there is no any kind of the warhead and no rocket fuel left inside. So basically, it's just the dummy that hit the building and this particular kid's room. Once again, you may see it on this image, but Russian propaganda would say that Ukraine is targeting civilian buildings with kids inside. Wow. But actually, it's Belgorod air defense, which bombs the own city of Belgorod. All right, let's return to the deep state military map to Klishivka because there is the latest update from the place. It seems like Russia took some of the ground there recently, so it was yesterday and indeed it is today. Russians are going through this railroad in attempt to break through and go to Klishivka village. However, not a long time ago, Ukraine was successful attacking Russian positions over here and even moved across this lake. But now Russia tries to attack Klishivka from this place and today they have took this part of the ground. Well, if we speak about this particular sector, it's hard to say who got the initiative, but if we speak about this part near Hromova and Bogdanovka, obviously Russians already took initiative out there. To some of the international news, one of the main leaders of Hamas organization was liquidated by the Israeli air forces. His location in Beirut was uncovered and Israel launched the aerial attack on him. His his name was Saleh al Aruri. Aruri. He's the founder of the military wing of Hamas, and I think he was deeply involved in planning of the Hamas assault on Israel. In his interview after the attack on Israel, he said that Hamas are not guilty, but the locals are. Before he even met with Iranian spiritual leader or whatever the name of this guy with a beard. Well, anyways, it's the huge achievement of IDF since they got rid of one of the main managers, let's say, of Hamas organization. And just a last update on the Gaza Strip, the northern part of it, you may see that there is almost no resistance for the IDF forces. They've took control over almost everything. So it was definitely a very stupid thing from Hamas to start the attack on Israel. I think it's like 2 plus 2. They should have expected the response, but it seems like they were very surprised that Israel started the operation in Gaza. My friends, I'm gonna keep you updated on situation in Ukraine and not only. And don't forget to press the like to this video. By doing so, you help me a lot. Also, if you want to support my job, you may check out some of the links in the video description just below. Many thanks for my sponsors of YouTube channel and also supporters on Patreon. Guys, you are awesome. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.